Incarnation, they want to get off the wheel. You know, it's, it's a form of punishment to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back until you get it right. And then even when you finally get it right, you merge with Brahman and you lose your right. You now are no longer, you know, Tony or Roxanne or Sydney. You're just Brahman. You lose your identity. You lose your personal personalness. And you just merge with the, 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 the mind of the universe and you're done. You know? <clears throat> Theism, for Christians, death is the beginning of life in God's presence. Every individual will exist eternally, either with God, separated from Him. The purpose of life is to worship and eternally fellowship with God. We'll see that this is interpreted in different ways as we study Judaism and, um, uh, and Islam. When we get into Judaism, we're also going to be looking at Judaism as the Old Testament describes it, but also Judaism, as you see, expressed today, which is very different. You know, some of us learn if we were here on that Wednesday night when David uh, Liebman was up there talking about Judaism, you see that there's a very, there's a strong disparity between how Judaism is practiced today and how it was originally intended to be practiced. <clears throat> and Islam, as far as the destiny of Islam, well, there's some, there's some interesting perspectives on that that we'll cover but the ultimate goal in, in theism is, is to be in the presence of God, is to be with God for eternity. So, just as in, in way of a summary, uh, and this is where I'll break, I'm breaking some things up here. From the, from the three foundational worldviews, we have seven major worldviews you know, concerning the existence of God. And the important thing to believe, and this is where we get into, we're going to be talking next week about exclusivism and inclusivism. No one can consistently believe in more than one of these worldviews. <clears throat> because essential premises are, each are contradicted by the others. If views are mutually exclusive, logically only one worldview can be true. You know, again, this is just, it's not being a bigot, it's not being... Uh, narrow-minded, because that's the accusation that we always receive, but it just, you know, it just makes sense. You know, it's like the, uh, you know, the person says that nothing is true. There is no truth. Now, if anybody ever asks you that, there's a logical question you can ask them. Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> right? Is that true? Do you believe that? Yeah. Okay. Well, then obviously there is a truth. You know, <coughs> um, <coughs> you know, and some people, you know, particularly with with atheism or with or with people of a, of a, a pluralistic mindset, believing that everybody is true, they take certain assumptions. You know, and sometimes you'll hear them use the example of, um, you know, the blind man and the elephant. They say, we're all like, a, you know, we're like all these blind men, these different blind men feeling the elephant, saying, what is God like? And the one guy's at the trunk, and he says, well, you know, God is like a, a trunk. And he's describing the trunk, and the other blind man is <clears throat> at the leg. And he's saying, oh, God is like a leg. And he makes his description. The other one, you know, is at the tail. And these are all blind men feeling around and giving their own description and saying, well, that's what God is like. God is like... Whatever, you know, these blind men seem to think that God is like, whatever their experience is, that's who God is. Well, the, the gentleman that made up this, this analogy is, is making a certain assumption that all men are blind, that we're all essentially blind, that we don't know. And, you know, this, this, there's an old logical equation from Aristotle. He said, you know, all men are mortal. Aristotle is mortal. I mean, Aristotle is a man, therefore Aristotle is mortal. Right? Well, this artist who described this thing about the elephant said, all men are blind. Well, if all men are blind, and that artist is a man, then he's blind. And his analogy doesn't make any sense, because he has no idea. He's saying, this is what God is like. Well, but you just admitted that you don't know what God is like. Because you're one of the blind men feeling around, and you don't really have the whole picture. So how can you say that this is how God is like? 
You know, these, 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 these viewpoints have these self-defeating um, expressions. You know, it begs the question. That it's just this cyclical uh, mindset that doesn't really come up with an answer. So we're going to look at the seven major worldviews. Some of them are what we've already looked at. Some of them are, are derivatives of that. So we look at theism. We've already talked about this. An infinite God exists beyond and in the universe. The physical universe is not all there is. There's a creation of an infinite, impotent, excuse me, omnipotent and personal God who created out of nothing. You know, God sustains the universe and can perform supernatural uh, acts. We see Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Atheism, there is no God. The universe is all there is. Pantheism, there is no creator beyond the universe because the universe is God. Okay, and we get into some, some subcategories. Panentheism uh, is a form of pantheism, although this says that, that God exists in the universe, but he's finite, and he's sort of growing along with the universe. He's not all-powerful. He is, um, you know, he is to the universe as a mind is to the body. You know, he's sort of in operation, and he can do things, he can influence, but he can't control things. Sometimes it's called process theology, and we see this in Baha'i and Unitarian Universalists. You know, God is there. You know, he's not perfect. He's doing the best he can. You know, he's, he's, he's up there trying to help us, but he's, you know, he's kind of going along with us and learning things and... You know, so that's panentheism. Deism goes back to this transcendence of God. This is the, um, you know, sort of the watchmaker philosophy. God wound up the clock, set it going, and then backed off and said, all right, I'm checking out. I'm not having anything to do with this now. <clears throat> you know, God is beyond the universe. He's not in it. He's not present. He's not visiting with us. Um... It's theism, it's a form of theism, but no miracles, there's nothing supernatural. Um, he's so transcendent that we can't even know him, really. You know, they believe in a creator, but they still hold a naturalistic viewpoint. We get a lot of these, like, you see Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, a lot of our founding fathers, children of the Enlightenment, uh, were deists, as they were sort of exalting intelligence exalting intellect they decided that you know this was this was a, an intellectual view of God you know so they didn't feel like they had to <clears throat> um, rely entirely on faith that they could rely entirely on their intellect and that God gave them an intellect so this was you know this is how they were going to live uh, finite Godism is is similar to the panentheism Finite God is beyond and in the universe, but he's limited in his nature and power. Evil exists because God is unable to overcome it. And there's some, some gentlemen who are held to that. And we get, you know, a lot of that modern Judaism, they sort of believe in God. A lot of modern Judaism we find is actually very atheistic. But they believe in God. He's up there, but, you know, he's, you know, he only does so much. He's not really that involved. Uh, and that's where you find a lot of uh, the finite godism. And then polytheism, more than one god in the universe. Many personal gods exist, and they're active in the universe. Each god rules a certain domain over which he is supreme. You know, again, the Mormons, basically, we find that to be true uh, in, in the basis of their belief, because they believe that ultimately you can be a god if you get to the, you know, to the, to a certain point you can then be exalted as a god. You'll get your own planet that you can be god of. Just and that's where our god, if they, you know, they claim to share the same god that we worship, the god of the Bible. <clears throat> um, and they say that's where our god came from. Would Unitarian not fall into that because each individual kind of picks their own god? Or? The um, well, but the Unitarians. They, they can be polytheistic, right. or they can be monotheistic, because Unitarians, yeah, yeah it's, sort of a, it's, it's sort of a it's sort of a an open door policy. Mm -hmm. as, as a Unitarian, you can you know number one, I mean, as a Unitarian, you don't believe in the Trinity, mm -hmm. but the, you know the way that that church has now sort of formed itself because they merged with the Universalists. That's what they call the Unitarian 
universalists. Um, number one, they believe everybody's going to heaven anyway, so it doesn't matter what you believe. And that's why they just sort of have, you know, they're, they're sort of a pantheon, not pantheistic, but they're sort of a pantheon where you can come and worship whoever you want to worship. They don't necessarily hold to a belief that there are many gods. They're, they're what we would call pluralistic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you believe. All, all roads lead to Rome. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can believe whatever you want to believe. Ultimately, salvation will be found for everybody. <clears throat> you know. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding worldviews or any questions regarding the class? A little bit of a shorter class today. Mostly these classes are going to be probably around an hour and a half. Um, so just plan for that. The questions? Comments? Okay. Let's pray. Uh, thank you again uh, for this class, for the beginning. I uh, pray that you would, um, again, just uh, show us how we can best use this information, not to puff ourselves up, not to be used as a weapon against people, but, but to be used as a means for knowing where people are coming from, that we can better deliver the gospel to them and help them come into knowledge of, of who you are. So, Father, we ask you now, bless the remainder of our evening in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you.